To make a truncated octahedron using the blue sheets and the red sheets, all we need to need do is pop out the, the nets pre-creased and pre-cut from the, from the sheets, uh, fold them up like this. You need to fold it back and forward along each crease to get a good result like this. And uh, before long, you're going to be ready to put some glue on the tab. So it should all move nicely as though these creases were proper hinges. And then you need to put some glue on here and then fold it up and you've got your first hexagon base pyramid or you've made one. Got a few more here and you're going to need eight of them because an octagon from which the shape has been truncated has got eight triangular faces which are going to be cut down to hexagons because they've lost their they've lost their equilateral triangles well the equilateral triangle actually goes there there and there that would make up a face of an octagon octahedron then this, the the um, square base pyramid is red that also wants to be folded up and um, then glued and you're going to need six of those for the vertices of the octahedron so that's going to go like that and um, if you're careful you can keep the glue off your hands but otherwise it's quite sensible to have a, a damp cloth nearby so I'm going to have six of those and eight of these and the time will come when it all wants to be put together when the hexagon base pyramids have dried off a bit so we need to be careful to put plenty of glue right on the edges without allowing it to go over it's really only necessary to do one face but um, you can put some glue along there as well just to make sure that the edges meet together and for a short period of time you can slide or translate strictly translate the um, red pyramid and the blue pyramids so that you can't you can't see any red above the blue and uh, if you're looking from here you can't see any blue above the red so that's a good edge there now we're going to have um, four pyramids which are hexagon based surrounding each square base pyramid so we're going to get another one there and another one there these corners can be problematic they can come apart if you're not careful to put plenty of glue so it's a, a little bit of tension required there and as we're going to be needing those two faces this glue is um, a little bit old and it's not flowing very smoothly um, I've found glue sticks perfectly satisfactory for making these um, models but um, there may be a better glue for all I know so if anybody knows what it is I'm perfectly happy to learn so that's going to fit together so at this stage you've got your three shapes coming together and you want to look at it from different angles and that wants to go up a little bit let's go down a little bit and oh, that there's an error here I need to slide that up so it takes a little bit of precise attention to get everything as it should be but that's a good corner so if you proceed in this way uh, with care perhaps letting things dry a bit before you move on to the inserting the next pyramid then um, you'll get a nice model and I've got an example of a a well-made model here this one was made by a particularly attentive pupil and it's very fits together very nicely but there is another point when you've made a good number of these and the class has made a good number of these 
It turns out that, like cubes, that this particular shape tessellates three-dimensional space. That is to say, well, the, well, these are models, so they're not perfect, So, but it should fill space without leaving any gaps whatsoever. So that's another interesting property of a truncated octahedron. So what's going to happen here? Uh, that's going to go in there, isn't it? Is that going to go in? Yes, that's going to go in there. And you can see we're building things up. So if you're careful, and maybe use a little bit of glue on the, on the bottom, however many of these you make, you can fit them together to tessellate three-dimensional space. So those are just a few points about making these particular models.